Ramen storage prices have been going up, as in like way up. They now cost as much as a GPU in some cases. The increase has been so steep that for many, computers are now unaffordable. May nagsasabi na we've been through this before. If you remember, during the pandemic, GPU prices also went through the roof because there was such a high demand from crypto miners. But this time is different. Mas malala ngayon because you can run a computer without a GPU. But a PC without RAM will not boot. A PC without storage will not boot. These are essential components. So in this video, we're going through five buying strategies to survive the RAM apocalypse. So wakan na ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mo lang sa CDKeyOffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang ang order. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, nagsisigi ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com First, buy DDR4, which means buying AMD, AM4, or Intel 13th or 14th generation CPUs. That also applies to storage. Say, go for PCIe 4 instead of PCIe 5, or even PCIe 3. To illustrate, G-Skill Flare X5 DDR5 to X16, 6000MHz, the dealer price is at 22000 So that's RAM with no RGB. G-Skill DDR4, RIP JOS naman. 2x16, 3600 MHz, also no RGB. The dealer price is 9,500. Less than half the price yun, and you're getting the same RAM size of 36 gigabytes. Yes, it's lower RAM. Yes, it's a generation behind. But you're getting the same RAM capacity, and you save more than 10,000 pesos. Plus, you get a functioning computer. But don't go naman DDR3. Even penny pinching has its limits. The same one generation down technique applies to storage. The fastest type of storage currently available is PCIe 5 and VME drives. But even before the surge in prices, PCIe 5 storage was just catching up. Most consumers were still buying PCIe 4. So we'll take a comparative look again at the prices. Again, these are dealer prices with no retail markup yet. A crucial T705 Plus 1TB, so that's an NVMe PCIe 5 drive costs 10,270 pesos. A crucial P310 1TB NVMe Gen 4 drive costs 7,430 pesos. That's almost a 50% increase between the P310 and the T705. I mentioned DDR3 earlier for RAM and said it wasn't a good idea to get that specification anymore. But for certain PCs, it's perfectly fine to get PCIe 3 storage. Office computers, even mild gaming or editing computers, all are fine with PCIe 3 speed storage. Because honestly, the actual performance increases between PCIe 3, 4, and 5 are not that big. On paper, the transfer speeds sound much faster. And that's what manufacturers want you to believe. But actual, real-world gains are modest. Don't get me wrong, mas mabilis naman talaga the newer the generation. But if it's a choice between no PC at all, or having a PC, one with PCIe 3 storage, PCIe 3 storage is fine. To give you an idea about PCIe 3 pricing, Alexar NM629, 1TB NVMe, PCIe 3 drive, at dealer price is only 4,960 pesos. Although, out of stock na rin yun sa supplier namin, so maybe more people are still on the hunt for PCIe 3 drives, which makes a lot of sense, especially in this market. Lastly, I've been talking about NVMe drives, but many users don't even need NVMe. All PCs should have an SSD drive. That's non-negotiable in a modern PC. But you can go with the slowest SSD type, which is SATA. A crucial BX500 1TB SATA SSD has a dealer price of 5800 which is actually more expensive than the Lexar PCIe 
Gen 3 drive I just mentioned. Why is the faster PCIe 3 cheaper than the slower SATA? You can skip to tip 3 for the explanation. But generally, lower generations should mean lower prices. And going with older generations is a very viable option when building a PC now. Second, buy smaller capacity, for example, 16GB instead of 32GB. If there's one bright side to the Rampocalypse, it's that these price surges are happening for components with a lot of options. And one of the main options you can play around with for RAM is capacity or size. If you're going with a DDR5 system, usually you would get 32GB of DDR5 RAM. Usually, but these are not usual times. There's nothing wrong with getting 16GB of DDR5. Yes, you're getting 50% less RAM, but you're not getting 50% less performance. 16GB is fine for many applications, even for gaming. The price difference is around 50%. Dealer price on a T-Force Delta RGB 2X8 16,000MHz CL38 is 10,250. The same RAM but at 2x16 is 22,150. So you save 50% or so less on RAM and you're still getting a very capable system. The same less is more or less is good enough approach also applies to storage. Usually drives range in size from 250 gig, 500 gig, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, 4 terabyte. For primary drives where you will be installing the OS, the sweet spot here is really 1 terabyte. If you're a gamer, 500 gigabytes is really the minimum you want to aim for. Microsoft officially recommends you have 64 gigabytes for Windows 11. In the real world, you'll probably want to have at least 100 gigabytes for Win 11. Valorant takes around 60 gigabytes. Dota 2 also takes around 60 gigabytes. So you can see that 500 gigabytes gives you some breathing room to have an OS and multiple games on the drive. But many games are not as slim as Valorant and Dota 2. Infamously, COD alone takes roughly around 150GB to 200GB. So ideally, 1TB is what I would recommend for most users. 2TB and higher are nice to have but you can live comfortably without them. And you will live more comfortably with the money you save by skipping really large storage. Again to illustrate, here are the dealer prices for the Crucial P310 and VME Gen 4. 500GB will set you back 3,580 pesos. 1 terabyte will set you back 6,200 pesos, 2 terabytes 11,590, and the 4 terabyte a whopping 21,870 pesos. It's pretty straightforward. The larger the capacity, the higher the price, and for many builds, you don't really need large capacity. For RAM, 2x8 is still viable for most use cases, and for storage, 500 gigabytes is somewhat good, decent, all right, depending on what you want the PC to do. Most people, I would recommend, 1 terabyte, yun talaga yung sweet spot. 3. Buy lesser known brands. There are top of mind brands for these components. For RAM, it's G Skill or maybe Corsair. For storage, it's Samsung. Because they're so well known, you are paying more for them, but you're not necessarily getting better performance. Lesser known brands are still quality, and you can get them without breaking the bank or breaking the bank less at any rate. For example, dealer price for a G-Skill Ripjaws M5 Neo RGB DDR5 to X16 6000MHz CL36 is 22,570 pesos. A Team Group Delta RGB DDR5 to X16 6000MHz CL38, so just slightly slower timings, is at a dealer price of 16,600. A 6,000 peso difference is a lot for basically the same product. Same goes for storage. A Kingston KC3000 1TB NVMe PCIe 4 is at a dealer price of 16500 A Lexar NM800 1TB NVMe PCIe 4 is at a dealer price of 7800 That's more than double the price. Just between the two brands, you're getting both Gen 4 1TB. We've had many videos talking about lesser known brands that are actually quality and can be trusted. The bottom line is, now would be a good time to step out of your comfort zone in terms of brands and experiment a little bit. Your wallet will thank you. And that's true not only for RAM and storage, but most especially for GPUs as well. And last tip on this, Crucial is a well-known brand for storage. It recently announced that it would be going out of business, or rather it would stop selling to consumers and focus on the business end. That's sad, I like Crucial a lot, but in these end days, I've noticed that their prices haven't gone up so much because suppliers also want to flush out 
They want to get rid of their Crucial since Crucial is closing down essentially as a brand. So that might be one avenue where you can get quality, a well-known brand, but at a lesser price. The suppliers, definitely Hardware Sugar, will still honor the standard warranty of the RAM or of the storage. So really, there's no downside to getting Crucial. Or there's no downside in helping Crucial sell out their existing stock. Four, cut back where you can, and that means no RGB. We've cut back on capacity or size, we've cut back on generation, we've cut back on brand recognition. Meron pa bang pwedeng i-cut back? Yes, aesthetics. Because do you really need RGB? This will not save you a lot, to be honest. At DDR5 and DDR4 pricing, usually the price difference for non-RGB and RGB models is around 500 to 1,000 at the most. But that's still savings, and if you don't care about lighting, that's a small but concrete way to get the budget down. Last tip, and applicable actually to any PC component, is to buy secondhand. Secondhand is a great way to save as long as you have a reliable source of secondhand parts. Our shop, Hardware Sugar, runs a secondhand list. It's helped a lot of people. It is generally very reliable. Usually 95% walang problema. You can hear more about our secondhand list, our secondhand sales in our shorts, and the link to the list is in the video description. To give you an idea, we recently sold the secondhand G-Skill Trident Z Neo, 16 gigabytes to X8, 3200 MHz DDR4 for only 3850. Anytime you can get DDR4 16GB RAM for less than 4,000, that's a good day. Secondhand items do come with their own risks, warranty issues, legitimacy issues, but you can really save a lot if you find a source that you can trust. RAM and storage prices have gone up, and we've discussed ways on how we can adjust to that. There's talk now of GPU prices going up as well. Paano na if that happens? I guess we'll make another video. If it does, to find ways around it. Hope this has helped. Thanks for watching.